Everyone seems so far away. Everyone can hear me though, right? Yes? I had such an amazing day today, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you all or any have seen some of the classes, but uh, it was basically taking, I did a movie called You Got Serve. Has anyone seen You Got Serve? Yeah. So I wanted to bring the magic of the vibe of being on set. And it's not necessarily the choreography that they're going to pick up. It's more the moments and the vibe. And there is a little bit of magic within the world of freestyling. So each kid, uh, I remember being young, 15, knowing that I had a talent and I had a gift, but I was afraid to share it. So it, I had to find like-minded individuals that also thought <laughs> breakdancing was cool in the early 90s, right? <laughs> It was cool in the 80s, but it, it started fading away. But one thing that I have noticed, it's 2022, and uh, through the pandemic, a lot of people have been uh, stripped from their normal uh, studios, their normal friends, their normal, so a lot of people turned their phones on to video record themselves. And the magic of that was freestyle. All these remixes and, you know, take a song and uh, it's almost like uh, virtually battle someone else, right? Um, but it allowed the world of dance to connect, which is what we're all a part of. We're part of this world of dance and movement that us from being parents and adults um, and the kids that we are raising are a part of. So one of the most important things is the feeling, that the feeling cannot go away. That feeling of when we were young and we were dancing, whether it was professional or not, it's what the kids now call a vibe, right? It's a vibe, it's a vibe, it's this feeling. So uh, uh, last year, um, I was helping more like direct what the music video was gonna feel like, but this year I was like, let's try to make it feel like a movie, like you're on set of a film. Now with that, um, raise your hand if you're coming to the seminar tomorrow, Beyond the Steps, are you coming? Okay, so Beyond the Steps is now being on the production side as a parent, as a producer, as a choreographer, helping the kids understand it takes more than just learning the choreography, right? The choreography is the steps. You learn the steps, you get noticed, you do well, right? Your videos go viral, but in order to make it in the industry, it's beyond the steps. It is being on time. It is being respectful. It is knowing um, uh, when to talk, when not to talk, right? Or when to uh, help someone else out, whether it's, uh, thank you for like carrying the, the poster or the bump box. It's being kind to one another allows you to stay in this industry longer than just being good. Um, and that's a very, that's something, uh, I've been in the industry for 27 years. Um, I'll be 43 in November. <laughs> I've been in it for a while, but over time I do get asked, how do you stay relevant and how do you stay in the industry for a long time? And the thing is, the magic is, once someone helps open a door, whether that's me or someone else, an agent, a manager, Adrian, one of the staff, if someone opens a door for you, um, you, once you pass through that, it's being grateful first and foremost that someone opened the door. So I know that parents know the magic of being thankful and grateful. Sometimes the kids, it doesn't, it doesn't translate right away, right? Some of us are like, that's the old school vibe or the old school way, right? So I was telling the kids to be, the moment you step on set, and I was telling them, Forget that you're in the Anaheim Convention Center. Think that you are uh, at Sony Screen Gems on a you know eight million dollar set, <laughs> and that your um, your talent has brought you here. Now you want to stay here. You want to belong here. Look at the, everyone else in the room. We all have to become one in order to create that magic on set for a movie, for a commercial, for a tour, for a Vegas concert. You have to become. One, So a lot of dancers through the pandemic that became, you're just yourself at home creating videos. And so the pandemic kind of reset some of that, but I do uh, encourage them today, every single uh, set of kids that I touched, it was awesome to see them pick up the, the, the little bit of choreography, but 
let go and be free amongst others, amongst, uh, based on uh, uh, race and or sex, nationality, language that they speak, all of that. You have to be, once you get into the industry, you have to, what's the best way to put it? You have to be grateful, be thankful, and also be open, be open to, to change, to differences, to people, and um, I do want them to, uh, I guess, communicate with their parents more, because I always feel like parents do such a good job of talking to their kids, and then sometimes they don't listen, or it's not the right time, but I, I was encouraging the kids to, to open up and talk. I think communication is so important to understand each other, right? To understand dance, you have to know the music and what the choreographer's saying and the language is a five, six, seven, eight, right? Which some parents are like, ooh, right? <laughs> it's like a whole nother language, right? Uh, but there's, uh, there's being open, <clears throat> not just to other dancers, but to their parents and that comes with respect. So I definitely saw from walking into the room to leaving the room, um, you guys have done a great job as parents. There was, I felt very respected. I felt honored that we were able to find a vibe in the room from little kids to, you know, the seniors, which was really good. Um, and parents sometimes don't get the, <laughs> the kudos. There's like kudos over there. The kudos or the pat on the back or the, or the thank you. And um, I'm here to let you guys know you guys have done a great job. There was no one that was disrespectful, no one that thought they were too good or too cool for school or whatever. Um, so give yourselves a round of applause. And uh, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause because how else do you measure it besides someone telling you by experiencing your kids that you know you've, you've done a good job and, and they're headed in the right direction, which is very important. Sometimes you can kind of gauge or tell, ooh, they might not be in the right crowd or they might not be in the right mix, right? Or the music they're listening to might be a, a sign of, you know, uh, you know, where are they going with that? But I do, um, I did feel today that it was really, really good. Powerful, encouraging, it was fun. Um, and in the beginning uh, of the last one, <laughs> I was a little bit nervous. We all came back from lunch. I was like, who's got the itis? <laughs> Right? Everybody's like, struggling again. I was like, oh no. <laughs> we'll start class in 15 minutes. Everybody hit up Starbucks. Um, but uh, if you guys have any questions, I am very open. I'm very transparent. We are all adults, you know, so I can talk to you guys a little bit more straightforward. Uh, but yeah, be proud of of the kids I've had throughout the day because there there's, there's some gems. And I always... I always imagined what would the future of dance look like? Like if I have to hang up my Adidas, <laughs> hang up my dance shoes someday. Um, and it's looking bright, so that is really good. It's really good that the future of dance, you know, if these are the kids that are coming to, and I'm pretty sure you guys want right, them in the industry and to be successful, they are on a really good page. So um, yeah, be happy, it's good. <laughs> Any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Yes. When my daughter does hip hop and she does her turns, her knees at the end of the day will hurt badly because the, the sneakers that she's wearing is not allowed. Is, is you know is going against the grain, right? Yes. What do you recommend in style of shoes if you're going to be doing turns and whatnot um, with hip hop? Flatter shoes that I know turn really well are like Adidas Gazelles. Adidas Gazelles. Yeah, okay. and Pumas. Yeah, they don't have grip at the bottom. Got it. So they they actually uh, slide even on carpet. They slide really well. Awesome. Or if you know you need to do like a moonwalk or a turn. Yeah, for <laughs> a sure. A backslide. Yeah. So Adidas the the Gazelles. flatter the shoe, the better it is. And also uh, Chuck Taylors, the Converse. Once they wear out a little yeah. bit, they're really slippery, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so Adidas those are gazelles. good. But off the bat, Adidas gazelles, those would be the ones like, right yeah, off the bat. Adidas gazelles would be the good low tops, and then they also have, I mean, they protect you because they're thick, but the bottom is slippery. Slippery. Okay. Yeah, and then the chucks, if you wear them in, the yeah. high top chucks, yeah, they're slippery as well. Okay, yeah, she wore her chucks today, but they're they're the old ones because, again, and but they're too small in her. So, oh yeah. You know, the fit, so it still, it hurts yeah. her toes a little bit, right? Totally, yeah. Yeah, and the uh, Adidas shell toe. So it has this groove that runs like if you guys have ever had shell toes, the grooves run like this. So if you do turn, it's not against the grain okay. if you turn because the bottom of the shoe goes like this. Okay, got it. Yeah, most nowadays are meant for grip or running. They're right. like right, yeah, like lifestyle shoe. But yeah, Great. gazelles are good. Uh, shell toes are good, and Chuck Taylor is a good the, the old Converse. Old school, yeah, the old school. Yeah. OG. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> you were saying that it's important to be respectful and stay on, on set and to be listening and everything, but uh, how can you comment on something like, you? yeah, you obviously need to be listening and stuff for a child, and but you also need to express your personality and be like, you know, sassy and stuff to be noticed. And, uh, things like that. So where is that balance and what can you say about that? Well, to be, if, if, it's a, if it's a question that they would like to raise, I always encourage questions. If the fact of listening is, if you do, well, for myself, personally speaking, when I listen, sometimes my question gets answered by listening or someone else asks the question that I was thinking. If it's in, in the form of dance and speaking loudly through movement, I always encourage to go bigger than to be uh, dimmer as far as dance movement. I mean, like listening, like discipline listening, like, like being disciplined, being you know, respectful to all the people who are telling you what to do on set. But also, um, you know, a child needs to also express themselves to be, you know, have some personality and stuff. Like, I'm not doing that because whatever. Um, so where's the balance of being like, do, being, um, doing what you're told, but also being a little bit of yourself? Um, are you asking personally? Personally for me? Or if I've seen on for set? For a child. For a child, if, let me get this correct. If they're being sassy just to express themselves, is that what you're saying? Yeah, the balance between being sassy to express their personality and actually being, you know, doing what you're told. Is there, well, is there a line that they're crossing between? So if someone is listening and they are trying to prove a point but trying to prove someone wrong, that could be seen as disrespectful. But if they are raising a point like I would not like to spin on carpet because it does hurt my knees and it could shorten my career I think they should voice that if that is ignored um, and their voice is not being heard because they're young I would suggest they go to a producer or a choreographer someone with more of a voice that will take their side as a dancer and and confront that person because um, it could be reversing the role they could the child could be almost getting bullied in a way if they're not listen to, does that make sense? Like a child could come out of their skin to say something because they're not being listened to, but they could also go, uh, or like climb the ladder, go to someone else to say, I really need to express this to this specific person because I'm not being listened to. Unless they're crossing a line to, to prove a point to an adult, is that what you're saying? I actually, honestly, live very far from what I meant to ask you. I meant like, my dad is all like, hey, and like all sassy and stuff, but I also need her to be listening and be like, yes, of course, I will do that. So the line between expressing your personality and mm -hmm. actually getting done what needs to be done. I think there is a lot of kids like that, and I, I listen to them whether they're sassy or not. That's why I was asking, is it for me personally or, uh, or set etiquette on set? I encourage... I encourage sassiness as long as it's not disrespectful, that's all. Because sometimes it could be being done to almost <laughs> override what's being asked of them. But to show personality, yes, and to, to show their innermost beauty and that's how they are, then yes. Because some kids are misunderstood and that's, that's kind of, that, that's sad. I would rather hear it from their soul to see how they're going to express themselves and then maybe someone like myself can help filter what it is they're trying to portray because a lot of a lot of creative people we 
we, we let it out and sometimes we, <laughs> that's just how we are. That's just how we are. And if a child is that way in their purest form, I encourage that they be that way. Yeah, okay, I encourage that. Yeah, and that's me personally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> other people might act or react a, a certain way, but I was also very hyperactive in school and I, I just wanted to dance or ride my bike or jump on the trampoline. So I, I, I do feel like I was misunderstood but I was too hyper. I wasn't expressing myself properly. So I, uh, I side with you on that, <laughs> on her, with, with your child, yeah. <laughs> Funky. Any other questions? Any Anyone other else? questions? Anyone, anyone? Oh, I'll come, I'm coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's been dancing for a while, but it started with ballet that's very classical and then moved into jazz. She loves hip hop. She's not the best at it. So I've been trying to, to help her get rid of some of this ballet training, not get rid of it, but you know what I mean, to, right. to get down with hip hop. Any advice on that? I think, um, do you have uh, what they call sessions where hip hop dancers meet? Do you have any in your hometown or nearby? She's training at school. At school? Yeah, so what, what, what helped me, um, sessions are hip hop dancers that gather, they're like gatherings, and there are no rules. If you break, or if you're a crumper, or if you do hip hop from the studio, or if you do old grooves from the 90s, but you, you get together, collectively, creatively get together, you form like a circle, the DJ plays music and you're able to let go more than going to a studio because what a studio does is you start to see whoever's teaching or the choreographer, you are looking for direction. They are the direction in which the movement is going to take form. That choreographer or that studio or my fellow mates move a certain way. So if the movement, if they want to be free and freestyle through hip hop, then you start going to sessions and you start absorbing creatively other people's movement. Almost, it almost morphs your style into this loose, free-spirited movement. Um, I do notice, myself included, when you go to a specific class or a specific teacher or choreographer, because as a dancer, you have to mold yourself to what you're seeing, you start to look like that person, right? It's just by default, by human nature, that's the direction in which I'd like to go. I'm taking this class. And then when you are freestyling, your body, muscle memory has adapted that movement. So it's, it's hard to shake off, right? <laughs> so if they start going to sessions, um, in the session, nothing really grasps grasps a specific style of movement. You are free to move. But if you start seeing somebody grooving or somebody crumping or somebody breaking, um, once the image comes through your eyes, it opens up your mind to now want to explore movement within yourself, whether that's you know in your own studio, in the garage. Um, so I encourage people to do that to session. They call, they call them ciphers, sessions, circles. Um, and inside that circle, there's an exchange of respect through movement, which is unspoken language. It's like, you know, otherworldly in a way where you could have a ballerina go and the spins or the technicality or the strength opens up my mind as I see her, like, wow, look at the control she has. So now me as a b-boy, as a hip hop dancer, when I go in, it, it is an extension of what she left there, right? I won't look like her, I, there's no way I can copy what she's doing, but she has now inspired me as a movement artist to, to create different types of flow, ins and outs, connections with my own body. So I do encourage people to, to session and cipher. It's opened up my mind completely, even with tap dancers. We did that for Step Up and for LXD. We had classical, John Chu had a classical band playing um, and on the opposite side had dancers um, uh, 
I mean, he said con connect, but speak and fill in each other's phrases with the movement of what that sound makes you feel. And that opened my mind incredibly to respect classical music, to find the pocket, to let a high note kind of generate my body to take a move to a different plateau than I ever practiced at home because it, it, it kind of, I don't know, you just ride that wave. So sessioning is very important for any, any dancer, any dancer, any style, um, like athletes. We were just talking about it and <laughs> it was great to hear Shaquille O'Neal say, I took ballet, that's what got my basketball game better. You know, and Jerry Rice took ballet. So there is a way, even through sports, to inspire your body to be the very best it could be. And dance is a very powerful tool, more powerful than I think the world knows it is. Like uh, Albert Einstein said, uh, dancers are the athletes of God. And there's something so high in th that moment when a dancer releases what they're thinking, what they've been taught, and they just let go, they're almost moving as if the wind took a feather, I don't know, you know? And uh, I encourage kids to, to, to find that freedom because you could sail forever. You could just find, your, uh, find yourself through dance. You could find yourself through dance. You could find your soul, your happiness. You could find your wife through dance. You could find... <laughs> Yeah, like it, it, dance has definitely, I've let it, um, some people say to, to be a vessel, you know, to be a vessel of uh, God, the higher power, and um, I know that dance connects me to that higher realm of, of appreciation, of love, of thankfulness, and, and uh, yeah, I think that's how me and my wife met, I was like, how, do, how have I never met you? You know all these people, and I know all these people, and it, it will align you if you allow yourself to be a vessel. It will align you to all of the things you always wanted because that was meant for you <laughs> rather than, you know, brothers or sisters might do, you know, my sister is a cheerleader. Um, my brother uh, is, is a car salesman and he loves it. He loves selling cars and getting commissioned. And I, I feel the vibe and I was like, man, was I the only one that was meant to dance? in my family, because I felt like the oddball, you know? Like, <laughs> the ugly duckling outside, like, oh man, but this makes me feel good. But um, yeah, dance has taken me, yeah, places. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I do want to say, um, if your uh, child is expressing themselves through dance, the best thing you can do, even if we don't understand it, is to support it as long as they're not bringing harm to the, their family, yourselves, or themselves, is to support it. It's hard to support something you don't quite understand, but at the end of that, at the end of that chapter, like later on, it all somehow makes sense that you're, it was meant to be, you know? So it's uh, out of love, support, out of love. <laughs> Where's your hand going up? Yes, yes. And I think. <laughs> wait for the mic, wait for the mic. I don't want to miss it. <laughs> Hi. So Hi. my daughter originally started when she was little, little breaking. Um, and then she moved to, to hip hop. And then now she's doing all styles and she's on an elite team. But as part of her elite team, they also are in um, a like a battling league. Mm -hmm. And so she um, is back in breaking again. She's... <laughs> kills it at hip hop, really loves it. She's finding it really hard to get back into breaking now that she's older and mm -hmm. trying to find that inner confidence because yeah. she's gonna be battling against others. So I've tried giving her advice and stuff like that, but do you have anything that maybe I can take back to her when she's one-on-one, -on -one, like when she's battling against, to, to try to, I know it's to build her confidence, but she doesn't really need that, but she needs to zone in somehow, mm -hmm. like to when she's battling. So is there anything that you can suggest that I tell her when she's yes. breaking? <laughs> I would tell her, uh, does she know who Cloud is? Cloud, yeah. Madonna's dancer Cloud, and logistics? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what they did that makes them so different is when they started, their body started to grow, 
they couldn't do the same moves that they used to. So they started, yes. they started fusing, f like literally fusing all of the movement they learned in the choreography world and on stage, fusing it with their breaking, and they okay. are... They are some of the best b-boys and b-girls in the world, logistics and cloud. So I would highly recommend, um, uh, instead, of, instead of trying to uh, go head on to that yeah. wall of, that's blocking her, fuse it. Fuse okay. everything that you've learned and then apply it to breaking and okay. watch how her style starts to morph because her body was successful at hip hop and her body was successful as a b-girl. So now if you fuse it, it will empower you to get through that for sure. Okay, because she's sure. struggling with like some of the other girls who continued with it while she went like contempt and whatever, right. um, developed, you know, the tricks. Mm -hmm. And so her freezes and so she's like, oh, her freeze is better, her, you know, whatever. And I kind of tried to tell her, you got to develop your own style, mm -hmm. even if it's about footwork. Mm -hmm. Like you don't necessarily need a trick, but... Am I on the right yes. path? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. If she okay. fuses it, so once the body figures out how to connect A to B, and, and, and uh, you learn to ride the pocket, right now she remembers how her freezes used to look, how her flares or windmills used to be. But if she starts to fuse it, what ends up happening is her body mechanics will almost create a new style. Awesome. It, it will it will be a hybrid. I went through the same thing. I was a gymnast, and they were like, "You can't break and flip." And I was like, "My name is Flips. I flip." Now, <laughs> now, how many people flip in breaking? Almost everybody. And when at 27 years ago, that was not allowed. You were not allowed to flip and get points for flipping. That was a gymnastic move, and they would make not make fun of you, but they definitely would vote lower. And guess what? 2024 in Paris, France, breaking will be the first dance ever in the Olympics. Yeah, we, our studio yeah. is one of the sponsors for it. Oh, so there you yeah. go. Yeah, there so you go. We're excited. That's amazing. Yeah, so, and I know that we as breaking, so breaking, 1973, Bronx, New York, it was the first hip hop dance noted, you know, on the records or Wikipedia or, right? But for the, the body and the culture of the movement of dance, like we celebrate all styles of dance and the fact that we get to go to the Olympics, it's not for breaking, it's for dance. It's like for every, for e e anyone and everyone. Like I want your daughter to be in Paris 2024. <laughs> so for, for her to get over that, have her fuse it. Basically, everything you ever learned, connect it and mold it and, and use it. It will help you get through that barrier because it is, it's trying to decide, I'm really good at this, I was really good at that, I wanna get back to that. It's, mm -hmm. it's just like this little like hurdle in her mind. Tell her to fuse it, Cloud said it. Cloud was really good at power, little demon, really good at power. And then as they grew up, their, their body changes. So they, their legs were long and the flares were scraping and the windmills were slow. So Cloud started fusing all of the movement he learned from Madonna's Confessions tour and being on tour with all these artists and Cloud became this, like, it's like, he's like the B-boy Fred Astaire, right? Kind of, sort of. He's just like, wow. That's my friend. <laughs> um, and logistics is the same thing. She said, I, I, I hung up breaking for a while. I tried to come back to it. She didn't feel like she was good at it. She started fusing all of her hip hop steps into her style and she just, I don't know, had this breakthrough and now she's like this style originator situation, which is really good. I saw your hand up, yes? Um, is there anything the, girl, the dancers can do to work? You talked a little bit about musicality, about musicality at home, like what they can do at home to practice their musicality outside of the session, yeah. like if they don't have opportunities like it, that. If, if you let them get a bump box and blast it <laughs> all day. <laughs> yeah. No, um, the thing about musicality is your mind, body, and soul have to accept the sound. You cannot force like you, uh, you, 
couldn't force someone to like the same song you like unless they liked it, right? The thing about youth is they're being fed whatever is going viral or whatever is on the radio. Some of the music we don't like. We're like, what is this bumble rap, right? What happened in 90s hip hop, you know? <laughs> but the thing is, right, you have to lo love it and accept it. Like some of the music nowadays, the kids don't accept it. Like their mind, body, and soul doesn't really accept the sound. They're not married to the sound. They're just like, that's the new song by, you know, uh, name one, Big Sean or whoever, right? But they're not there. They're not tapping into the magic of the musicality of it. They're just listening to it, and that's what's hot now, so let's do that dance that everyone is doing. When you feel a song, it speaks to you. So when, when your kids might even enjoy old school hip hop, you start playing old school jams, and they're like, what, what's this? Hello, Cool J, <laughs> right? Wu-Tang, no, you know? Um, so, so let them venture in and in, 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 if it's hip hop, hip hop, right? The genre of hip hop. Let them listen, not to today's hip hop, let them listen to hip hop from the origins of where the samples were being made off of old jazz music. Let them listen to that and the horns, right? Because now horns are synthesized. A horn is not a horn, it's like a button, right? But if you sit there and you're listening to the right music and your kids start going, what's, what's that? I've heard that before. Yeah, it's because maybe Drake took that from Marvin Gaye and he sampled it, right? And that, that the origin, the true sound and magic of that genre came from this sound. Now, if you're synthesizing it, you're getting synthetic sounds, music. So your body might not be like too joyful to it, right? <laughs> and then the lyrics on top of that, it's like, ooh, turn it off. So let them, let them venture off in the genre of hip hop and see what magically happens when they hear something that they like. And they're like, what is that? And then on like Pandora or um, Spotify, you can pick that artist and right, it gives you similar music. Like if you pick Tribe Called Quest, it'll give you some Nas, it'll give you some Wu-Tang, it'll give you some Busta Rhymes, right? And, and I think it will open their um, palette to the real sound of, of hip hop, more of what we're used to. Um, and that could be any genre. That could be, that can be um, rock, that could be jazz, that could be, um, but musicality is a big thing, especially when you're on camera. When you're on camera and we're filming these movies and stuff, like you, you have to feel the vibe. Some of these dancers, they can, like uh, fiction, you guys know who fiction is? He can embody like every single note on the track and then the lyrics on top of that. It's, very, it's a very powerful thing to watch someone tap into that so freely and so well. It looks like he's not even breaking a sweat. So um, I would encourage that, like let them, yeah, do what you wanna do in living color. <laughs> Yeah, the Fly Girls, that's what's up. And that was, that then was, there's no show like that now. And that show was like, this is our culture. And it's one hour long, and it's got skits, and it's got everything else. But the music they were feeding you was actually the livest, realest thing. It's like a live radio station, live, with dancers and and acts and skits, that's amazing. We lived in really good times, you know, pre-Netflix, you know? <laughs> Pre-COVID and binging of Stranger Things, <laughs> which takes us back to the 80s. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is gonna be our last question, by the way, before you guys can go watch your kids. Sorry, I talk a lot. So I have a son that dances hip hop, and pretty much you know how they compete, they have the judges' critiques. He always gets a, he needs to slow down because he's just so full of energy. Everybody's seen him next door. He is just going <laughs> and he gives it all. How can, although he's good and you know, he, he wins and all that, but how do we work on him slowing that down? 
because they judge, they say he needs to slow down because it'll show his moves better. Mm -hmm. How do I dial it back? Well, for competition purposes, have him try to ride the pocket of slower songs, but for uh, the, the, his, his, his personality and his personal taste on music, if he chooses to move fast, let him move fast. Let him move fast. There are people that have built entire careers off kind of going against the flow of things, but again, they're freestyling and they're not being judged for it. If he's being judged, have him try to challenge himself in writing the pocket of the song. It won't be an instrument and it won't be a lyric. It'll be that in-between space, which will cause him and force him to slow down in a really artistic way. Find the pocket, find the pocket of this and play whatever BPMs music he's now actually performing to, find the slower tempo. Find the slower tempo and just let him have fun with it. He's gonna start to adapt to ride within the pocket, which is always slower. From A to B, it's always slower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Amazing. See, parents helping parents. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so let's give a big yes. thank you to Flips oh. for all of his knowledge. Thank you.